This is an old book from the Netherlands from 1918 or so called The Radio Book for Trade, Amateur and Listener made by Engineer Shearer. And I want to sum through a little bit. Of course that's difficult with such an old book. Many schematics are completely obsolete, tubes are obsolete, etc. etc. So for instance in this book they published this big big circuit, one meter at one meter to make a certain radio on medium waves. Uh, the RM radio, DC receiver, detailed descriptions how to make a radio and that was good in those days, 1920 or so. Wanna sum through further. Um, Vocht, Mr. Vocht, one of the founders from the Dutch uh, radio in the 1920s, a studio, etc. etc. Here an advertisement from the NSF, uh, the Dutch um, zijn toestellen fabric. So translated uh, the Dutch transmitting um, uh, devices factory. Something like that. Beautiful old radios by the way. Um, one of the inventors from the radio so the development of the radio in the 1920s and some true here a frequency table of course in the 1920s although those extreme high frequencies could not be reached by radio circuits, radio amplifiers of course. The technology was not there in those days. So go to another circuit, take some time. This, in, this uh, radio for instance um, here for instance a crystal radio here um, tank circuit, tuning capacitor, antenna there are much, much uh, circuits on my YouTube channel. A transformer and here a triode tube that amplified the radio signal somewhat. And I'm sure you're going to make this circuit nowadays. No problem at all. When you find a good triode tube, ECC18 for instance in the Netherlands, but of course in America other countries all the uh, codes from the tubes differ. Positive to the anode, negative to the cathode. Here the radio signal is given in into the, uh, the grid and here it's amplified. Nowadays you can surely make such a circuit in exactly the same way. There are still triode tubes on the market nowadays in 2016. Another circuit. Oh well, this is very interesting. Uh, a honeycomb spool. Uh, that was the way to make um, um, a reception coil for all these frequencies. And a good idea from the honeycomb cool spoil sorry the honeycomb 
coil was that it had less internal capacitance. That's why it was made that way. And here also uh, old types of radio reception coils. This is a uh, basket coil. Here a Lisse Genon coil. Don't know what it means, but the principle is all the same. All these coils had the property that um, too much internal capacitance was avoided by making it in this way. Anyway, Philips loudspeaker, another loudspeaker, Stradivarius Conus Cone loudspeaker, etc. etc. So I cannot sum through the whole uh, book. That's of course important. Uh, I only wanted to give a, a small impression from such a book in the Netherlands in 1920 or 1930. Batteries, for instance. Uh, well known uh, batteries Lake Lanchet, zinc chloride Lake Lanchet. etc. So I don't give more comments. I think the pictures from this book will speak for itself. And I hope to find someone, some uh, pictures. Rectifier circuit. Battery high voltage circuit. Philips Rectifier 1920 Rectifier circuit Battery combination from Varta, one of the oldest German uh, battery makers. Still makes very very good batteries. Voltmeter Positive plate from a battery etc etc. So the video gets quite long, 7 minutes now. So I have to stop, but I think you can get a good indication from the radio technology from the 1920s when all was experimental and when everyone could make uh, a radio. That was also good in those days. With a few tubes everyone could make a radio. So that was all to tell. Wish you luck.